Hello scientists, welcome to Drawbar Mat, the channel that helps you to learn how to draw scientific illustrations for your research. And in this video, I will very quickly uh, walk you through the guide to preparing final artwork by Nature Springer Publications. This uh, guideline applies to all nature branded research journals. So uh, I will uh, go through it all and then also explain some of the um, graphic design terminologies for you so you know how to set them up while you're preparing your illustrations. This is the document and uh, on the very top of the page you see that they uh, tell you that you better uh, follow this guideline carefully because inappropriate formats will delay your publication process. So. Um, yeah, so uh, it's better to follow these guidelines. So first, let's look at the figure sizes. So uh, here's a like a small example page that you can see here, and uh, your your illustration can be either one column wide or two column wide. This format is for original research and review content. So um, I think this is the one that you guys mostly are working on. So uh, yeah, pay attention to these two numbers. And uh, when I personally am des uh, designing graphic abstract, I usually use 180 two column width um, because uh, most of the graphic abstract I designed are uh, in a landscape. This uh, using two column width provides me more space to do horizontal compositions. If your graphic abstract is in a portrait layout, then uh, you can use uh, one column width. Uh, personally, I always find it a little bit too narrow. Um, when I'm designing. So once you decided the width of the figure, make sure you also follow the uh, height of the figures. As you can see, uh, the more captions you want to put on, put underneath your figure, the less uh, height you will have for your illustration. So yeah, pay attention to these. Uh, it has a um, direct relation with the word count in your uh, figure caption. Okay, so let's move on to the text size. So first one, it says uh, a text should be sans serif typeface. So I will explain this in uh, a playlist of the science of art about the font. Sans serif is a typography term. Uh, it uh, it means that there is no these pointy ends uh, at the at the tip of your letters. So uh, if you zoom in to these letters, you see that they don't have uh, these uh, little uh, pointed tips uh, that like the ones that you can see in Times New Roman. For digital uh, publications, they prefer you to uh, use sans serif fonts. So these two uh, are the most uh, common one that people use, uh, which are Helvetica and Arial. Most of the computer operating systems have these two fonts, so you don't need to worry about uh, they might have missing font in their system. Uh, so uh, it's better to use these two as they suggested. Okay, here they say maximum text size is seven point, minimum text size is five points. They're quite small, <laughs> I have to say, uh, but if that's uh, the uh, recommendation in the guideline, then you should follow them. Let's move on to color. Uh, original research content should be supplied in RGB color mode. This is very important because it will have a big impact on how your uh, image will look like. Uh, so uh, you can check out this video. Uh, I would uh, explain the theory behind RGB and CMYK. Uh, in short, RGB is for uh, screen display uh, images and CMYK is for printing. They recommend you to use RGB because uh, most of the journals are published online these days. So um, it's very real, rarely that you need to print them out. Here it says all other contents, including these pers uh, perspective progress articles and review articles should be supplied in CMYK color mode. So pay very good attention to uh, selecting CMYK mode if you're writing these three categories because most likely they will print these uh, articles out on paper. So uh, it, it is very important to use CMYK. So the color in your final illustration will look exactly the same as you see on screen. Uh, if you use RGB and 
then there will be a disaster because uh, some of the RGB colors are not uh, presentable on CMYK. Uh, they are not able to be printed out. So it is extremely important to select the right color mode for uh, the corresponding contents. Uh, yeah, make sure you check that uh, color theory video that I make so you'll get a better uh, sense of how to choose these color modes. Okay, that's, let's move on to uh, the chemical structures. For chemical structures, uh, they uh, have these uh, specific file type and format that's coming from ChemDraw structures. So uh, make sure you also follow that guideline. So stereo images are very straightforward. Uh, supply them in their final print size. And then uh, permissions. Uh, this is uh, quite important when submitting your uh, manuscript because uh, it involves uh, with copyrights. As you see that here they say they cannot publish any third-party images without securing the appropriate rights. So this will not be a problem if you create all these graphic abstract by yourself and following the Drawbound Med tutorials, then they should be fine because you uh, created these images and you have the copyright yourself. But if you use stock illustrations, stock images, or uh, some of the applications that uh, they uh, they describe here, then uh, you need to make sure that you have the right license. Because when you use uh, these applications to create a graphic abstract, then the copyright of the graphic abstract belongs to that application or that company. The names are here, you can just um, take a look at them individually. I will not go into it uh, too much. And if you have uh, any doubt, make sure you contact them to uh, clarify any uh, ambiguous uh, concerns. So yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's all I can say <laughs> about this. And then uh, Wikimedia Flickrs, uh, they say you should avoid then uh, they cannot publish any images download from the internet uh, unless they're in the public uh, domain license. I talked a little bit about it in the free illustration review video, so uh, you can check that out. Some of them have the Creative Commons license, which can uh, even allow you to use the content for commercial use and also for publication use for free. So uh, yeah, you can check out that video to find out more about it. And uh, if you want to uh, use the image uh, from photo library, do not purchase it. Instead, supply us with the library catalog number and a low resolution placeholder. We will secure publication rights and obtain the final version on your behalf. So maybe you guys have seen Getty Image and Shutterstock. If you want to use any of their uh, content in your publication, you can actually uh, just download the low resolution preview. They always have these watermark of the brand uh, on top of the, on top of it. Uh, but it's a as the guideline says here, you. It is totally fine for you to just put it there on the placeholder and then you provide the catalog number. Once your manuscript is in the reviewing and publication process, uh, they will go to obtain those publication rights for you. So this is a very handy service that they provide and also a very important uh, guideline instruction. So make sure that uh, you follow this if you use any stock images. Let's move on to uh, saving figure panels. So uh, here they say that all graphs, charts, schematics, or other line art should be as vector files and photographs, complex illustrations as bitmap files. This is also very important because it will affect uh, the resolution of your images. So, uh, I will quickly explain what vector and bitmap files are. So vector uh, files are usually uh, the line arts that you see in the uh, publications. For example, these kind of uh, very schematic clean line art. They consist of uh, outlines and uh, color fills. The best thing about vector images is that they can be scaled without losing their resolution. 
And the reason is that they are generated by uh, the mathematical calculation by the computer. So uh, once you scale it, they can just recalculate it. So it can be as sharp in every scale. Uh, so, uh, as you can see here, they give you an example of difference between a bitmap image and a vector image. And for bitmap, uh, they are uh, constructed with pixels. So uh, when you scale them larger, then uh, they will start to lose their resolution. But for vector images, uh, that will not happen. This is a very important thing that you need to keep in mind that it's better to keep these uh, images that uh, they suggested here as vector files. Some of the files that they are not able to uh, be made into vector files, so they can only be saved as bitmap files. So they have uh, listed the file formats here that you see that these formats are all bitmap files. That means they are constructed by pixels. Uh, so uh, it's very common that you see that the GIF files, JPEG files, uh, PNG files, and TIFF are all bitmap files. Uh, make sure that uh, you provide a very high resolution uh, image when you are providing a bitmap files. Also do not artificially increase the resolution of images because that does not improve the quality. I will make a video to explain more about the science behind the vector files and bitmap files. So uh, make sure you subscribe to Dropout so you can see the video when it's out. And also uh, I will put it over here when the video is live. And let's move on to the next section, Microsoft Office. Yeah. Um, this, I think most of people are very familiar with it. Um, so uh, I will just let you take a look at it by yourself and Adobe Photoshop. So they say they do not recommend Photoshop for creating figures because it is a raster picture based application and is often large and difficult to process and they uh, their files are in bitmap format. So uh, the vector data can uh, easily become flattened. So uh, you will lose the advantage of having a vector files. If you decide to use Photoshop, then uh, these are the three file formats that can uh, help them to uh, make editorial progress in the future because it, they because the PSD file, TIFF files, and EPS file can retain a lot of the vector elements in there. Then combining vectors and bitmaps for final layout. And uh, so they tell they, here they tell you a few more tricks to uh, maintain as many vector elements as possible uh, because vector elements uh, often uh, get flattened. That means rasterize into a bitmap format when you're you're saving them into a file. So here they are trying to keep as many vectors elements as possible. So when combining different figure parts in one file or layout, use a vector-based application such as Adobe Illustrator or Microsoft PowerPoint. So they recommend uh, these these file formats. Uh, AI is for Adobe Illustrator. EPS is uh, also contains vector files and PDF, and PPT is for uh, Microsoft PowerPoint. So that's also why you see on this channel, most of the tutorials are uh, in Adobe Illustrator. And uh, for EPS file, uh, you can save it with Inkscape. So all the elements that you learn on this channel are able to be saved in these vector file formats. Do not use applications that do not support vector format. Uh, so uh, these are the file formats that I don't support. Uh, some of them are very uh, common, like JPEG, TIFF, PNG, GIF. So yeah, pay attention to that and then uh, Place all bitmap image in a layout application at 300 dpi or at native resolution if capture less than optimal 300 dpi. Yeah, so just make sure that um, they have to be 300 dpi. And all text and any overlay elements, all these things, uh, boxes, arrows, scale bars, should be in editable vector format and lay over a bitmap image. So. Uh, once again, they try to keep these information in the vector uh, format so they can be scaled uh, properly later. Uh, at the end, they show you a uh, example of uh, 
what happens if you、uh, rasterize your vector elements into a bitmap image, and you see that、uh, these、uh, arrows and、uh, the text are starting to、uh, be get pixelated、uh, when you zoom in. So yeah, that's the end of the guideline. Make sure you follow these guidelines if you are submitting your man manuscript to、uh, Nature publications、uh, or any journals that's、uh, in a Nature branded research journals. Leave in the comments that、uh, which part of the guidelines you would like me to explain a little bit more in detail, and I will make some future videos about it. And、uh, I hope this can help you with your research publication. And subscribe to Drawbar Mat if you like to see more of these、uh, tutorials. And I look forward to seeing you in the future videos.